Focus, good. of highway I saw above me that endless skyway saw below me that golden valley this land was made for you how's everybody doing we're gonna get started in a couple minutes here but I thought I'd ask everybody to come in if you're here for the release the report rally come on in here We're gonna do a little chanting here before we get started. Come on in, come on in, don't be shy. Be part of this group, we are here together for our democracy. That's right. And I'm with the Nobody is Above the Law Coalition of Public Citizen. Glad to be with you. Let's do an old favorite. When democracy is under attack, what do we do? Stand up, fight back. When justice is under attack, what do we do? When transparency is under attack, what do we do? When rule of law is under attack, what do we do? When the Constitution is under attack, what do we do? When balance of powers is under attack, what do we do? When civil rights are under attack, what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? Stand up what do we do? Stand up All right. Woo! Gonna do a call and response. Who is above the law? Respond. Nobody is above the law. Am I right? Who is above the law? Is Trump above the law? Is Bill Barr above the law? Who is above the law? Is Trump, our president, above the law? Nobody's above the law. Nobody's above the law. What do we want? Justice. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? When do we want it? What do we want? Full report. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? Full report. When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. What do we want? When do we want it? Now. All right. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Release the Report Day of Action. If you're here for the action, come closer. Come closer. We're a community. Come closer. That's you in the back. You can hear me. These speakers work. We paid good money for them. Come closer. Come closer. Thank you. You can hear me. Yeah, you looking at me. I'm talking to you. Come on. Thank you. We're going to get started. Thank you, everyone, for coming. I'm Reggie with Move On. You'll learn more about me and our, and our other folks in a minute. But I'd like to introduce to the stage Rochelle Rice to start us with the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave Peru through the night 
that a flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, geez, that was terrible. Good afternoon, everyone. Third time's a charm. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you, I feel at home. I'm from DC, so I appreciate that. I'm Reggie, I'm from Move On. I'm Lisa with Public Citizen. And I'm Marge Baker from People for the American Way. And to get, to get things started, I am going to introduce one of our champions of democracy and a champion for transparency, the Honorable Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for giving us hope and energy and inspiration. And thank you for coming out today to show us what America looks like. This is what America looks like. This is what democracy looks like. Full transparency and public disclosure. The American people paid for that Mueller report. They deserve to know everything that is in it. So my message, your message, America's message is release the report. Release the report. Release the report. Now I have, I have something to tell you. There is at least one person who doesn't want America to see that report. And since my mother told me if you don't have something nice to say about someone, don't say anything. But my mom's not here today. So here is a message to the President of the United States. Release the report. Release the report. Release the report. And release the full Mueller report. Now, we have gotten from the Attorney General of the United States We have been so fortunate to receive a summary of the report. You know who's beginning to say that report is inaccurate and unfair? The Mueller team is beginning to say, you didn't do justice to our report. You didn't provide the findings and evidence. So I want to thank my House colleagues, for authorizing a subpoena. Don't they deserve a round of applause? And I want to thank my Senate colleagues for joining me in a bill. It's called the Special Counsel Transparency Act. And we have two or more, maybe now more, Senate colleagues, Senator Grassley, Senator Kennedy of Louisiana, has said the full special counsel report and facts and findings should be released. The Senate and the House are together. It's bipartisan. Release the report. Release the report. Release the report. What are they hiding? What are they concealing? And for all those folks who say, oh, well, there's an executive privilege, no. 
Now, I'm, I'm just a country lawyer from Connecticut. But I can tell you, the law is pretty clear. There is no executive privilege. Congress deserves that full report, and so do the American people. You paid for it. You deserve it. The full Mueller report. Release the full Mueller report. One last point. We the people demand the full Mueller report. And that's exactly my last point. When I say this is what America looks like, this is what democracy looks like, all across the country, in my home state of Connecticut, I wish I were there sometimes when I'm here, all across the country, America is rising up. All across the country, America knows when even Attorney General Barr says that the Mueller report doesn't exonerate the president, that there is evidence of obstruction, that there may well be evidence of collusion with Russia, even if it isn't beyond a reasonable doubt. All of America knows we deserve the Mueller report. And those rallies, those rallies across the country today, and yours here, your presence here, sends a very powerful message. Democracy is going to prevail over the forces against it. We will win. We will release the Mueller report. Thank you for being here today. Let's continue this great effort. And thanks to all of the groups. Thank you to all of the grassroots groups, all of the organizers, for your great work. You are saving democracy. Thank you. Huge thanks to Senator Blumenthal. So now I am thrilled to turn the mic over to the chair of the Judiciary Committee, Representative Nadler, doing Herculean work to protect our democracy. Find us the truth. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank all of you for standing up and speaking out about the need for Congress to get Special Counsel Mueller's full report and for the need for there to be transparency with the American people. People like you are speaking out all over the country in over 300 events nationwide because you know that we are in a battle over the rules that govern our democracy and over the rules that guarantee that we will remain a democracy. We cannot allow a president to carry out sustained attacks on the integrity of our republic and on the integrity of our democracy. We cannot allow a president to erode our accountability that is built into our system of governance. Our system of checks and balances demands that Congress get the full Mueller report and all the underlying evidence. Because it is our job, not the Attorney General's, not the political appointee of the President's, to determine whether or not the President has abused his office and needs to be held accountable. The Constitution charges Congress not the Attorney General, withholding the President accountable for official misconduct. And the Constitution gives Congress the power to take the appropriate action to hold the President accountable for his deeds or his misdeeds. To do our job, we need the Mueller report, not the Attorney General's summary or a significantly redacted version of the report that the Attorney General has offered to give us without the underlying evidence collected by the Special Counsel. You know, we have seen this before. In 1973, the Nixon administration had an idea. They didn't want to give up the tapes. They didn't want the tapes to be public. They didn't want the Special Counsel to see the tapes or to hear the tapes. So they decided, or they proposed, 
that will let Senator Stennis, who is famously hard of hearing, by the way, will let Senator Stennis listen to the tapes. And he'll tell us what he thinks is suitable for Congress and the public to know. Special Counsel Cox rejected that recommendation and was fired the next day because of that. But that began a series of events that led in certain directions that I don't have to mention because you all know them. Because the special counsel Cox knew that he needed access to the Oval Office tapes and the evidence of significant abuses of power by the president. Yeah. Today, the Department of Justice, the Attorney General, seeks to limit our access to the Mueller report, as if we learned nothing from the Stennis proposal of the Nixon administration. But we have ample reason to suspect the administration's motives. And we think, we know, that DOJ is simply wrong to withhold that information from all of us. This is a matter of law, and it is a matter of justice. We need a full accounting of the President's actions. We need a full accounting of the President's actions not only to determine what this President has done, because, because, but also because one way or another, one way or another, one day the country will, will move on from President Trump. And, and we need to make sure that no future president feels as empowered as President Trump does to abuse the power of the presidency, to attack the nature of our democratic institutions, and to endanger our democracy. That is what we are fighting for. That is what the question of the release of this report in its entirety is about. That is part of what, I should say, the release of the report in its entirety is part of what we have to do, but an essential part of what we have to do to make sure that this president and future presidents are accountable to the Constitution, are accountable to the people, and are accountable to the democratic institutions of this government, of this country. That's why we are holding this rally and the 300 others across the country. I thank you again for your voices, your energy, and your support. And I know you will not flag until we have held the president accountable and have guaranteed our democratic institutions. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing to have him here at this rally with us. One final round of applause for Chairman Jerry Nadler. <laughs> Chairman, we support you and we will get you that report. The grassroots are not gonna take this anymore. Um, we're back. Hi, I'm Reggie with Move On. Uh, this is the No One is Above the Law Coalition. And it's been a unifying force to protect the integrity of the Mueller investigation and all investigations to unlawful activity by this president and his counselors. You know, we were here about a month ago, right? <laughs> In the very same spot where the president declared his dubious national emergency. And our actions in conjunction with the Castro resolution that measure passed both the House and the Senate, and we sent a stern rebuke to this president saying we're, he's not going to have it like he did in the 115th. This is a new Congress. The 116th Congress is a new day. There's some new sheriffs in town, and we just saw one of them just now. Yeah. <laughs> we won't stand for continued obstruction, especially in light of recent reports from the New York Times and the Washington Post. And with a president and administration that believes in alternative facts, like sorry, not sorry, we just don't trust you, man. <laughs> we just don't trust you. So in fact, you know, the president was for releasing the report before he was against it. And since you cannot make up your mind, we'll help you make up your mind, you know. <laughs> the Congress requires a full report and underlying evidence to do its independent work as a co-equal branch of government, and we're here to demand the full report. <laughs> we, the people, demand the full report. 
We, the people, demand the full report. What? We, the people, demand the full report. Two times. We, the people, demand the full report. Again, we, the people, demand the full report. Thank you. <laughs> so we're not alone. People from all ideologies and backgrounds want to release the full report. We're one event of the 330 across the country. Today for this moment, and Lisa will tell you more about that. Thanks, Reggie. I'm Lisa Gilbert with Public Citizen, one of your hosts. It is amazing to be back here with the Trump is not above the law movement. So we turned out in force when we needed to in November to push back on the pick of Matthew Whitaker. And we are standing here again today, unified in our demand for an unvarnished, full Mueller report. As the whole world now knows, Attorney General Bill Barr, Trump's hand-picked guy to run the DOJ, sent a four-page summary of the 400-page special counsel report. He took 48 hours to reduce 22 months of work to four pages. Boo. <laughs> His brief summary is no substitute for the full and final Bob Mueller product. And we've got so many unanswered questions, not the least of which is why did Mueller leave wide open the question of obstruction of justice? Americans deserve to know the truth. And we cannot rely on conclusions that are coming to us through a filter from the president's inner circle. So we need to see the full report and the underlying findings ourselves. And we're looking to Congress and the champions we just heard from to take the next steps, subpoenaing the report if it's necessary and digging in on the unanswered question. Because the real question is what are they so afraid of us yeah. seeing? So we are here today and at 330 other locations around the country demanding that they release the report. We're going to yell that demand. We're going to focus the country on that demand. And we have an incredible group of speakers who are going to get to the heart of that demand. Because we demand the truth. We demand the truth. We demand the truth. We demand the truth. Let's hear it. Demand the truth. And now to Mark. Hey there, I'm Marge Baker with People for the American Way and so proud to be with you and so humbled to be with you. Look out there, you all are the champions of democracy and we're not alone. There's 330 other events in 44 cities around this country going on because we will not sit by. Because what's going on is that Trump and Barr are trying to make the Mueller report go away and we won't let that happen. The American, people have, the American people have a right to see the report and Congress needs the full unredacted report and findings to do their job. There is public corruption. There is abuse of power. There is obstruction of justice that has to be investigated. Congress needs the report to do its job. We say, release the report. 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 Great. Now, fantastic. Now, on to some of our wonderful speakers. I hope y'all brought y'all's chanting lungs today because we're going to give you all the workout. Uh, without further um, delay, I'd like to introduce my sister Neera Tandon to the stage from Center for American Progress. Who is happy that we have Chairman Nadler instead of Chairman Goodlad? We work so hard over many months to ensure true accountability for that White House. Didn't we? Yeah. And what did we get? We get an attorney general hand-picked to cover up. Hand-picked to ensure the president isn't accountable. And now we hear that the prosecutors in the special counsel's office are telling the American people that essentially the attorney general has misled the country. 
Someone said, shocking, surprise, surprise, right? It would be a surprise if he was the one person who hasn't misled in this administration. Here's where we are. In the United States of America, we had a special counsel selected to determine whether the president has committed crimes like obstruction of justice. And then a hand-selected attorney general, a person picked because he prescribes the role of that prosecutor, comes in, finds the report, right, takes 48 hours to write a memo exonerating his boss who just picked him, and now is hiding the report from the American people. What is that? That is a cover-up. That is a cover-up. Ah, yeah, yes. And it is not just a cover-up. It is an obstruction of justice. Just a continuation of the obstruction of justice we have seen for months from this administration. If you're innocent, what do you have to hide? 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 That is why we have a very simple request across this country. They are expecting us to lose interest. They are expecting us to go on about our business. But what is at stake? What is at stake is our democracy, because if a president can obstruct justice and then have his attorney general protect him by hiding any accountability, that means this is a democracy no longer. That is a dictatorship, not a democracy. When you can ensure that you have zero accountability and your cronies in the Senate, your cronies in the Senate will protect you, we need to subpoena now and ensure that we have the full report not just redacted portions, the entire report for the public, because we have worked too long and too hard with people working in elections, people turning out in protests, to ensure that we have actual accountability for this corrupt president. And if he wasn't corrupt, they wouldn't be hiding the report because we all know if that report actually exonerated him, they would ensure each one of us have a report at our house, reading it for dinner. <laughs> so we need to get the report and we need to end the cover up. 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 And we will protest until we see the entire report. So America maintains the fact that we are democracy, not just in name, but in act. Thank you very much. Let's give it up, let's give it up one more time for Nira. Woo! And now it's my honor and privilege to introduce a dear friend and colleague from People for the American Way, Diallo Brooks. Hey, y'all. I'm Diallo Brooks, uh, Senior Director of Outreach and Public Engagement for People for the American Way. I'm here on behalf of the over a million members of our organization. It's good to see y'all again. We're out here again. We're out for, here for several reasons. One is to let that guy that resides in that building, our building over there, that we're not gonna get tired. We're not weary and we're not weak. We will not stand down, we will not relax, and we will not give in to his corruption and lies. Because we fight for democracy. There are people all over the country. I think it's over 300 rallies all over the country of people standing up, 
to this president, to this administration and say, stop lying to us. Tell us the truth. Open the curtains and shed some light. It's a nice sunny day out here. We want some sunshine on this government. We want this government to work because it is our government. It is not Barr's government. It is not Trump's government. It is the American people's government. And the American people will stand every single day to make sure the truth comes out. Don't hide behind your appointed attorney general. We know why he appointed him. We know why he appointed him because he says the president can do no wrong. But we're here to stand up to that. We're standing up for the truth. We fight every single day for democracy. We will rally around this lie and every other lie that this president tells. Because we can't trust him. We can't trust him with a report, a little summary that, that someone read in 48 hours and put out a little summary of their own opinion about this report. Show us the report. Show us the report. Show us the report. Show us the report. We are the American people, and we will fight for democracy every single day. We will fight for the truth, and we will fight for the country we want. Let us see the truth. We don't trust this government, and we want to see the truth. Thank you. Let's give it up for Diallo. So lots of groups got together and made this rally happen. So we want to take a second and thank them, the groups all around the country that you were all a part of, who made rallies nationwide occur to make sure the report gets released. So we're going to read them rapid fire. I want to thank Move On, People for the American Way, Stand Up America, March for Truth, Indivisible, Common Cause, Center for American Progress, Daily Coast, Democracy 21, Sierra Club, Protect Democracy, Truman National Security Project, Mi Familia Vote, Every Voice, Working Families Party, The Arena, Common Defense, Together We Will, Demos, Free Speech for People, Avaz, and Center for Popular Democracy. All in one breath. Over to Reggie. Yeah. <laughs> right. Lisa didn't say public citizen. Democracy for America, Next Gen America, Town Hall Project, Progressive Democrats for America, March On, Not Move On, Women's March, Americans for Democratic Action, Friends of the Earth, Bend the Arc, Jewish Action, Lawyers for Good Government, American Federation of Teachers, Color of Change, Need to Impeach, Resist by Progressive North Carolina Action, WCPTA20, American Family Voices, Pantsuit Nation, Action Group Network, Tax March, Our Society, Ultraviolet, and Healthcare Voter. And Credo, SEIU, PCCC, Bold Progressives, Rapid Resist, and Greenpeace. Woo! Round of applause for all associated groups and yourselves. I need a better round of applause. Let's go, right? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for indulging me. Uh, I would like to introduce our next speaker to the stage, Marilyn Carpentiero from Common Cause. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I said good evening. Thank you. Now I feel welcomed. My name is Marilyn Carpentero, and I am with Common Cause. And on behalf of our 1.2 million supporters across the country, we stand with you today to say Trump is not above the law. Trump is not above the law. Again. Again. Common Cause believes transparency and accountability are the foundation of a strong American democracy. We, the people, have the right to know what Robert Mueller's report says. We deserve to know what happened in the 2016 election, and we deserve to know who was involved. We need a full accounting of the wrongdoing so that we can hold accountable anyone who broke our laws. We know that the special counsel filed over 190 criminal charges. We know Trump's most trusted campaign officials have been sentenced to prison. And we, the people, demand answers. So we say with one voice, release the report now. 
Release the report now. Release the report now. Release the report now. And just last, excuse me, we know the Attorney General Barr's memo is not enough. In fact, we believe it's just a ploy to protect this administration. Just last night, we learned that members of the special counsel's teams were shocked that the Attorney General's significantly downplayed their findings, which they described as alarming and significant. That is why we need the full report released now. And every now and then, politicians seem to forget who they work for. But today, from DC to California, from Maine to Miami, we are out here to demand every elected official that we are watching and we are not going to sit here and allow this administration to sweep this under the rug. Because we, the people, have the power. We, the people, have the power. We, the people, have the power. Who has the power? Who has the power? Release the report now. Thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. All right, so now we're gonna turn it over to a longtime warrior in the trenches for transparency. We're going to Fred Wertheimer, president of Democracy 21. Thank you. I wanna start out by taking a moment for all of us to recognize we started out with a mission. And the mission was to protect and defend the Mueller investigation. Today we can say, mission accomplished. And I think we all ought to recognize what an extraordinary accomplishment that is, given how hard the President tried to destroy this investigation. Today we have a second mission, and that is to make sure the American people and Congress get this full, complete report uncensored by the Attorney General. The Attorney General is the person who stands in our way, and he has three strikes against him. First, first, before he ever got the job, he wrote a memo that said obstruction of justice was fatally misconceived in this case and would do lasting damage to our presidency. He should have recused himself from the day he became Attorney General. He is not fit to make these decisions. Second strike. The Mueller report explicitly refused to exonerate the President from the crime of obstruction of justice. So what did the Attorney General do? He exonerated from the crime of, just, from the crime of obstruction of justice and he set the stage for the president to tell us his 1,000th lie, 2,000, 3,000, who knows how many, that he had been completely exonerated. Strike three. He is going through the Mueller report, and he says he can detect, redact information that would unduly infringe on the personal privacy and reputational interests of peripheral third parties. That is a license to steal. That standard can be used by Barr to remove anything that embarrasses the administration. It is not the responsibility of a political appointee of the president to censor the report of an independent counsel, and he's not going to get away with it. Now let's go back for a minute to 1998. On September 9th, 1998, Special Prosecutor Ken Starr, who had been investigating President Clinton, delivered to Congress his 445-page report and 36 sealed boxes of grand jury material. There is no basis for Attorney General Barr to do anything less. That standard was set by a Republican special counsel investigating a Democratic president. This report comes from a Republican independent special counsel 
investigating a Republican, I guess he's a Republican, whatever he is, he's president. And, and there is no way that President, uh, that, that, that Attorney General Barr can justify not releasing this full report. The Judiciary Committee has demanded it. We are demanding it all over the country. Congress must accept nothing less. We will accept nothing less. The American people will accept nothing less. And we will win this fight. And then we will move on to our next mission, which is to defend and protect the congressional investigations taking place now into obstruction of justice, abuse of power, and all the other related matters involving the president. We are not going away. We're never going away. We're never giving in. And we will be here to his bitter end. Give it up one more time for Fred. So in a moment, we have a real treat. We're going to hear from the DC labor course. It's awesome. But I need your help for a minute. Sometimes we forget how crazy, crazy, crazy things are, right? And I need your help with a it's not OK chant, OK? How many of you maybe saw that, that House intel hearing, right? When, when the Republicans tried to get Adam Schiff, remove him from the chair, right? And what he had to say was priceless and so captured where we are. So just bear, bear with me a couple times. It's, it, I can't do the whole thing, but here we go, OK? Schiff said, my colleagues might think it's OK that the Russians offered dirt on the Democratic candidate for president as part of what's described as the Russian government's effort to help the Trump campaign. You might think that's OK. It's not OK. It's not OK. All right, here's another one. My colleagues might think it's OK that when that was offered to the son of the president, who had a pivotal role in the campaign, that the president's son did not call the FBI. He did not adamantly refuse that foreign help, no. Instead, that son said he would love the help with the Russians. You may think that's OK, but it's not OK. Two more times, it's not OK. It's not OK. We've got to release the report. All right, now let's hear from our friends at the DC Labor Chorus. Woo! So nice to be here with you today. We're, with, we're members of the DC Labor Chorus. Our whole chorus is not here today, but we want you to join with us regarding the songs we're going to sing. We sing songs about the labor movement, and we sing songs about the struggle of working people for their rights to organize. And we know that's been under attack, right? But today we're going to sing some basic songs from the civil rights movement, and we hope you'll join us. There's been some flyers that have gone out. I'm not sure if you have them. The <laughs> and we're going to sing um, We Shall Not Be Moved, first song, and we've change some of the words to represent what's going on here. So let's start it up. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not, we shall not be moved. Just like a tree that stands it by the water. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for transparency. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for transparency. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. We demand the full report findings. We shall not be moved. 
We demand the full port port findings. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for democracy. We shall not be moved. We're fighting for democracy. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Last time. We shall not, we shall not be moved. We shall not. We shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. We shall not be moved. Round of applause for the labor chorus. We shall not be moved. We shall not be moved. Moving on with the program to keep in respect of y'all's time, Noah Bookbinder. Noah's from the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. Noah, floor is yours. All right. So I'm Noah Bookbinder from Crew and whoop. It's, uh, it's so great to be here with so many people who really care about democracy. And I want to first say that we are only in this position to be calling for release of the Mueller report because we have already been so successful, because we made it happen. Going all the way back to the beginning of 2017, this president wanted his attorney general, Jeff Sessions, to take care of this investigation into Russian interference in the election. And we said no. We demanded that Jeff Sessions recuse because he was too close to the investigation, and he did, and that's why we got Robert Mueller in the first place. And then the president spent months and years even trying to get rid of Robert Mueller through intimidation on Twitter and on TV and relentless criticism, even ordered him to be fired one time, and we said no. And then late last year, the president brought in Matt Whitaker, his hand-picked guy. <laughs> Matt Whitaker, who was not Senate confirmed, who was not qualified to try to take control of the investigation and we, we gathered here and all around the country. And what did we do? We said no. And because of all of that, Special Counsel Mueller was able to finish his investigation, write his 400 report, and you should give yourselves a round of applause for that. But what's happening now? What's happening now is that the president's new hand-picked attorney general, Bill Barr, sent up a four-page summary of that 400-page report with very narrow findings, questionable legal conclusions, and Congress has rightfully demanded the full report right now. But Attorney General Barr wants to delay, he wants to redact, he wants to edit, what do we say? We say no. Of course, we learned yesterday, just yesterday, that lo and behold, 
Attorney General Barr's summary might not truly reflect what is in the Mueller report. I, I, I don't know about you, but I, I, for one, am shocked. Shocked. So we need to see that full report. Congress needs to see that full report. And we're going to draw our own conclusions about what the president did. The president and his allies have said that this is over, that it's time to move on from investigations and oversight. But what do we say? No. We say, no. This has been the most corrupt administration in, in American history. And that's not speculation. That is not Trump derangement syndrome. That is happening right in front of our eyes, in plain sight. All you have to do is turn on the TV to see conflicts of interest, self-enrichment, disregard for ethics, holding nepotism over national security every day. But finally, now, we're starting to see some real accountability. There are real investigations going on in the Southern District of New York. And the, and the New York Attorney General's office. The House Oversight Committee is calling for financial records. The House Ways and Means Committee is demanding the tax returns. And the House Judiciary Committee has gotten a subpoena ready for the full Mueller report. And it's our job to make sure that these investigations, these processes go forward so there is real accountability. This is how democracy works. They say we should go home and give up on checks and balances and accountability. But we say no. Thank you for fighting for democracy. Thanks so much, Noah. Uh, so now I'm thrilled to introduce a staunch environmental ally from the Sierra Club, someone who has the amazing title, National Resistance Director, Mara Cowley. Hello, everybody. Thank you all so much for coming out. It is awesome to be out here in front of that house, the people's house, not just Trump's headquarters. <laughs> So the Sierra Club, we have 3.4 million members across the country, and they are standing strong, demanding that the report is released. In order to protect the environment, in order to demand action on climate, we need a functioning democracy. And in order to have a functioning democracy, Barr needs to hand over the report. Now, it's been 10 days, over 10 days, and it's been way too long. And we know that the more we can stand out here, the more we can demand our democracy function, the more we demand transparency, the more we put the spotlight on the corruption and the criminal behavior that is happening in that White House. If we are here and we fight, the report will be released. But it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, and we say now. So thank you all so much. Okay, give it up one more time for Mara. Woo! And now I have the honor of introducing Anthony Robinson, who is the Director of Training and Engagement for the Truman National Security Project, a really, really, really important ally in this effort. Here you go, Anthony. Good afternoon, good evening. My name is Anthony Robinson. I'm the Director of Training and Public Engagement for the Truman National Security Project. I also happen to be a former Obama Department of Defense appointee and a veteran of the United States Marine Corps. I'm here today to make the case and make it perfectly clear that it is a matter of national security that Congress and the American people get to read Special Counsel Mueller's report and all of its associated documentation. What Russia did in 2016 wasn't just meddling in our affairs. They launched an attack 
plain and simple, are one of our most important institutions, free and fair elections. Now, the president may not want to accept that conclusion. He may prefer to take Putin's word for it. But our dedicated and qualified intelligence community has said in public, unanimously and repeatedly, that the Kremlin interfered to help candidate Trump get elected. And then, fellow Marine, Special Counsel Mueller followed up, indicting three Russian organizations and 25 Russian individuals in his investigation. Now, I'll keep this really simple and give you two key reasons why we need to see the Mueller report. First, in order to prevent another attack on our democratic institutions in 2020. And we know that it's coming, but we have to know and understand how it happened. The second reason, is because we need to know what it says about obstruction of justice. Now, the president is fond of saying that Mueller completely and totally exonerated me. There's only one problem with that statement. It isn't true. Even Attorney General Barr's summary, a mere four pages, that doesn't quote a single full sentence from the almost 400-page final report acknowledges that there was evidence that the president committed obstruction. And by the way, four pages to summarize a 400-page report? Really? Really? I've written my fair share of government memos and reports and summaries, and that's damn near impossible to do. Can you imagine writing a book report that big and still getting the passing grade? Neither can I. And we're already hearing reports of people on Mueller's team who are concerned that the so-called summary is far too generous to the president. Now, we all saw evidence of obstruction in real time thanks to the president. We saw him fire the FBI director and admit in a television interview that it was because of the Russia thing. We saw him bully his own attorney general repeatedly for failing to stop the investigation before it even started. We saw him deny Russian interference in our election on the world stage, standing right next to the person who interfered. And we saw him send tweet after tweet after tweet, attacking the Mueller investigation as it was happening. So now, we need to see what Mueller found. And more importantly, what Attorney General Barr might be trying to cover up. He was, after all, handpicked to oversee the investigation. Maybe, perhaps, because he wrote a memo criticizing the very idea of investigating obstruction of justice. That makes the fact that he took only 48 hours to clear the president of exactly that crime suspicious to me. Now, I'm a national security and foreign policy leader, and I'm not okay with our national security being threatened. I'm not okay with our democratic institutions being threatened. But guess what? I'm also not okay, and our leaders in Congress should not be okay, and we, the people, should not also be okay with more short summaries from the AG. We should not be okay with more spin from the White House or more lies from the president. We need the full report, and we need it now. Thank you all for being here to say the same thing with your voices and your action. And I'll leave you with a quote that I remember that deals with staying the course when it comes to fighting for justice and fairness. The quote says, we must fight until hell freezes over and then be prepared to fight on the ice. Thank you. I've been to a lot of rallies, but I'm going to take that one with me. Fight till hell freezes over, then fight on the ice? What? Okay. <laughs> like, I've heard tons of speeches, never heard that. Thank you for that, brother. Wow. Fight till hell freezes over, then fight on the ice. That's gangster. Whew, okay. <laughs> okay, so we are here together, right? I'm not convinced by that. We're here together, right? So do me a favor, take a couple moments and introduce yourself to someone you don't know so we can create community in this space. We came here as strangers, we leave as friends.
<laughs> Say hello to one more person, then come back to me. But I used to teach civics in high school, so I can talk, and I'm amplified. I can talk over you if I have to. I ain't worried about that. Because I will fight till health. No, just kidding. Right. <laughs> Also, shout out to Philadelphia, New York City, Daytona Beach, Florida, Fairfield, Connecticut, Baja, Maine, Rock Hill, South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, Montclair, New Jersey, Columbia, South Carolina, Chicago, Wilmington, Delaware, and Boston are some of the key cities where we are, so shout out to y'all, um, and over 300 other cities. And before I introduce the next speaker, I'm going to do a shout out to my favorite signs that I see here because in all these events, y'all put so much work into these signs, man. And no one ever gives you love. That stops now. <laughs> so shout out to all crafty people out there. So my one favorite right now, where are you? Oh, man. It's like, hey, bar, how dumb do you think we are? Where are you? You were right there. Your moment in glory, all right. Well, I saw you. No one else could see you, but I saw you. And where is it up? My other one is like, we the people can read and will decide. We the people can read and will decide, right? And since I just said the word gangster, <laughs> I see gangster oligarch party. <laughs> GOP, gangster oligarch party. I'm not down with that. Um, Last sign, paying attention and outraged. I'll get to this side next time I talk, I promise. <laughs> so without further ado, next movement speaker from the Leadership Conference, Elaine brooks Lashore. How y'all doing this evening? Well, good evening. I'm Alan brooks Lashore with the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights, and I'm here to say that the civil rights community demand that they release the report. No one, not an attorney general and not a president, is above the law. And they have to hear us tonight when we say release the report. Release the report. Release the report. Release the report. Now, you have to wonder, what are they hiding? You, you have to wonder, what, what is Trump hiding? I mean, he says he can fix our nation's health care problems, but he won't show anyone his plan. He says that he's a genius, but he won't show anyone his grades. He says he's a billionaire, but he won't show anyone his taxes. He says he's exonerated, but he doesn't want to show us the Mueller report. He also says he has morals, but well, <laughs> y'all know where I'm going with that. But remember, while we hang on Trump's every tweet, Republicans are busy at work. They're strategizing, they're plotting, and they're rigging the system to consolidate power and to lock the people out. They are jeopardizing our civil and human rights. As we speak, Trump and his allies are trying to take over the federal government from the judiciary to the Congress. They think, they think all three branches should be in the pockets of the wealthy and the powerful. Are they right? No. They think our election should be sold to special interests in Russia. Are they right? No. They think they are above the law. Are they right? No. They are wrong. And we need to send a clear message to them. Release the report. Now, Donald Trump's favorite newspaper, the Washington Post, um, what is it? The, the Crooked Post? Is that what they are? Uh, he's, they have a tagline that says, Democracy dies in darkness. But our democracy is dying in broad daylight at press conferences, at cabinet meetings, at committee hearings, here beside us at 1600 Avenue, and the attorney general covering for a president, that's democracy dying, my friends. And it's happening right in front of us. And we can't let it happen, not on our watch. I'm a former American diplomat. I served in Saudi Arabia and Australia and other places for, as a foreign service officer. 
I traveled to foreign countries describing the virtues of American democracy. We talked about free and fair elections, about the rule of law, about a peaceful transition of power, how no one is above the law. But I resigned from the diplomatic service in part out of shame of the discredit that Donald Trump has brought to the presidency, to the government, to our nation, and to the American people. But Donald Trump will not have the last word. We can restore honor to our government, we can restore honor to our people, and we can restore honor to that house over there. And it starts with making sure no one is above the rule of law and demanding that they release the report. Thank you. Thanks so much, Alan. Uh, so we are on to our last movement speaker. This is a rally that was on time. It's amazing. So I am thrilled to turn it over to a man of faith. Uh, and I have faith. This rally gives me faith that if we keep the pressure on, we will see the full report. Uh, so I'm turning it over right now to Patrick Carolyn, Executive Director of the Franciscan At Work Network, to take us home. Good evening. My name is Patrick Carroll, and I'm the executive director of the Franciscan Action Network. And I'm here today as a person of faith. And I want to tell you that all faiths, Muslim, Christian, Jewish, Hindu, and every other faith want the report released. As a person of faith, I'm driven by a moral compass, by ethical values, and a sense of the interconnectedness of all creation. The 13th century Franciscan theologian and leader, St. Bonaventure, told us that how we choose and what we choose makes a difference. First, in what we become by our choice, and then, more importantly, what the world becomes by our choice. So what are our values? Where is our moral and ethical compass? When our leaders refuse to be transparent, when they refuse to release a report that every single American has a right to see, we live in a democracy, not a dictatorship. What will our great nation become when our leaders make the choice to cover up and hide potential wrongdoings? It's not a political issue. It's a moral obligation for Attorney General Barr to release the report immediately. Transparency is not just a politically correct thing to do. It is a morally, spiritually, and ethically right thing to do. It says in the Gospel of Luke, there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. Live as free people, but do not use your freedom to cover up for evil. The American people deserve answers. They deserve the truth, not a four-page summary written for political reasons. It was not many years ago that some of our leaders in Congress were standing shouting from the mountaintops demanding that all of the documents and information surrounding Hillary Clinton's emails be released to the public. These leaders, the vast majority of them, claim to be Christians. But now, when it comes to the Mueller report, their silence is deafening. The Bible in the letter of Timothy says, such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciousness has been seared as with a hot iron. In the Gospel of Mark, it says, Isaiah was right when he prophesied about your hypocrites, these people who honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. F Pope Francis has called for a bold cultural revolution. Well, it's time in America that we the people, we rise up and reclaim our moral values. And we should start with the value of truth. It's time for our leaders who claim to be Christian to stop pretending to be Christian and start actually following the teachings of love, justice, and peace. Thank you, and peace and all good. Round of applause for Brother Patrick. As someone who grew up in the church, thank you for bringing me back from my, my uh, infatuation with the, the, the hell phrasing, so thank you for that. Um, so I gave so much love to this side. This side, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take a selfie. Because nothing exists. If it's, if it's not on Instagram, it doesn't exist, right? <laughs> so if y'all are ready. Woo! 
Love y'all, but I, I gave y'all air time. I had to give them the selfie, right? <laughs> so we've made it to the end of the program. Thank you all for coming. A round of applause for yourselves. And in conclusion, you know, our work doesn't stop here, right? You know, drawing on the song we heard earlier from the D.C. Labor Chorus, we shall not be moved, Mr. President. <laughs> we ain't going nowhere. If you hadn't learned that on the day after the Women's March, you haven't learned yet. <laughs> we shall not be moved, Attorney General Barr. We all know, we can, I mean, I, look, I majored in philosophy and history in college, so I know a thing about cliff notes, right? I know about shortened version of big reports. I know about that. But four pages from a 300-page Mueller, that, give me a break. Like, those notes, give me a break. That's not... So that, that, that is obstruction of justice. And by way, and in closing, the DC labor course will come back up in a moment and their song is soon and very soon. So in homage to spring, a new day is at hand. Very soon we will be having a referendum on whether or not we want four more years of this gentleman. <laughs> so until that point, we will stand shoulder to shoulder. We will organize, we will support our allies in the movement and in Congress and stand up and hold the integrity of these, investi of these investigations. So, without further ado, Marge, please introduce the labor course, and thank you all for coming out and staying. Uh, just thank you so much, sending so much love your way. This is incredible, it's been incredible to be with you. And let's now close it out with our wonderful, wonderful DC labor course. Soon, very soon, an important message to hold on to. Soon, very soon, thank you all. Okay, again, great to be with you. And I encourage you to look up the DC Labor Chorus. Since the Trump administration, we've had like 24 gigs a year. It's like, you know, but we're really happy to be out there serving people. So this is a really easy song to learn. And I'll just start it off. Soon and very soon, we are going to change the world. Change the world soon and very soon. We are going to change the world. Soon and very soon. We are going to change the world. It's going to last forever and ever. We're going to change the world. Soon and very soon, we will have transparency. Soon and very soon, we will have transparency. Soon and very soon, we will have transparency. It's gonna last forever and ever. We're going to change the world. Soon and very soon, we will have the full report. Soon and very soon, we will have the full report. Soon and very soon, we will have the full report. It's going to last forever and ever. We'll have the full report in Spanish. Pronto, muy pronto, cambiaremos este mundo. Pronto, muy pronto, cambiaremos este mundo. Pronto, muy pronto, Cambiaremos este mundo, la, la vida, la vida, cambiaremos este mundo. Last time, soon and very soon, we are going to change the world. Change the world soon and very soon, we are going to change the world. Soon and very soon, we are going to change the world. It's going to last forever and ever. We're going to change the world.
Get up.